Designprozess ist immer A design process is always an exciting journey. Und ähm, die Herausforderung The challenge ist, is to create a product that works properly. My name is Timo Janssen, and together with my colleague Martina Ambrosiak, I'm responsible for creating a container design, from the initial sketch all the way through to the finished product. Customers definitely have stringent expectations. They want good advice and information, not only about the container itself, but also about the preform and the feasible specifications. So it's up to us to provide all this, and we have to communicate this to the client, He's entitled to expect that Crohn's can do all this. Ideally, we want the customer to be able to identify with the draft design. That it's not castles in the air, but things that work properly and look attractive. Speaking generally, the design process here at Crohn's is like yin and yang, when the creative input and the technical part complement each other. Yin and Yang are two opposing forces that then, in tandem, create a lasting equilibrium. I think that's the sort of relationship I have with my colleague. That sometimes perhaps I rush on ahead with my creative thinking, and then Martina applies a much needed break and says, let's talk about this or that again. The creative input done in colored ink has at some point to be put on firm practical foundations so that it actually works in the kind of high-speed line we sell. At the start, you see, you have some building blocks. For example, the customer wants neck finish XY, perhaps he wants a pinch, perhaps he wants a petaloid base. That means I already have some small building blocks to work with, which I draw together with the relevant dimensions. We technical people have our 3D tools for designing the base, the neck and the other elements involved. And we then incorporate in the bottle straight away certain technical stipulations that our lines necessitate. The focus is continually sharpened onto a technical product amenable to industrial scale manufacturing. So as to render the bottle concerned tangibly graspable by the client, so to speak. We also have an option for making an STL print, so we can really send him something he can hold in his hand. That's the next step. The client has to approve the bottle and then we proceed to design the mold. This involves expertise from all departments on how this is best accomplished. The design work starts with creating a container with a dimensional add-on, because the blow molding process entails a bit of shrinkage, which has to be calculated beforehand. From this container, we then obtain a 3D model with the individual parts, so that the negative is provided in the mold shell or the base, and all the adjustments, lengths of the individual parts and vent boreholes now have to be incorporated, plus all the other things that need fine-tuning. We mill the material with a tolerance range of plus minus one five hundredth of a millimetre. A hair measures two tenths of a millimetre and we're way below that. You get a trained eye for this sort of thing. Basically, I'm a sort of final inspector. I check the moulds at the end and put them together to form a complete unit. I make sure that the right quality is guaranteed. It's definitely the case that each of us feels fundamentally responsible for what he or she is doing, and that each of us knows what's at stake, that basically more depends on this than just a single mould or a series. We get a sample mould delivered to us and then try to obtain the best possible bottle out of this mould using the preforms supplied by the client. We have to find out whether the preform fits in the mold and have to apply a temperature profile to the preform. When it comes to blow molding a bottle, experience is vital because there are no firm rules about how you go about it. There are some guideline figures which tell us what changes when you adjust this and that, but most of it is a matter of intuition.
And then, when I think the bottle is just right, we send it to the laboratory. We get the finished bottles, and then we check them thoroughly and subject them to exhaustive testing. We check what volume the bottles can hold, meaning up to the filling point specified by the client. We check the wall thickness distribution, measure the geometry of the containers, their height, their verticality. We also test their stackability, using what's called the top load test, to see what loading the bottles can stand. And we run a burst test to find out the pressure at which the bottles rupture, meaning their mechanical strength. And we determine their sectional weights. Approval can only be given when all the stipulations have been met. And when finally the line is up and running and the bottles can be delivered to the supermarket shelves and are actually being bought, then we've achieved what we set out to do.